Hello. These are some ideas I've had concerning politics and economics and law. Uh, politics for me has gotten out of hand in that what is called the Republic has become a dictatorship. Even if it's not just one person, it is one idea and that is corruption that has come to control the political system. One way I have found to counteract this is to put what may be called the power back in the people's hands. Um, for example, get people to become informed voters. Not only is informed voters um, more likely to get out there and vote, but they're more likely to put people into office who actually belong there. The idea that the politicians do not represent the people is somewhat of a fallacy in that <clears throat> if practically anybody else was in that same political office most of the people would do the same thing that is go after money um, go for this special interest or that spe special interest even if they think they're doing something good or right they would still become distracted from what they're actually there to do and that's because these politicians come from the general public even if it's you know three or four generations ago these people are practically the same as the american citizen and so it's the reflection of the american citizen that has become this political system and so politically speaking the american people have to change if they want the politicians to change and one of these ways is to become an informed voter and an informed participator in the process give the people the choice to vote um, on every government official such as every cabinet position um, on the Supreme Court judges on the issues um, instead of saying well we're just going to relegate this to somebody else or delegate our responsibility to somebody else and we start to serve them when the politicians are there to serve us. This has to change. When it comes to national elections, I suggest having each county and each state have one vote after the accumulation of all their votes and the majority just by one will um, have the vote cast for this candidate or this candidate. And then all the votes in the state are counted and the state gets one vote. No electoral colleges, no um, Republican or Democratic national uh, committees or conventions choosing candidates. Just the people. Economics is a bit different in that the problem is money and everybody wants it. Um, and then there's just really not enough money to go around if this idea of capitalism as it is is to stick around and so a point I suggest is giving everybody an equal amount of money say a million dollars whatever it might be and have the idea of money recognized simply as a medium of exchange. It's not worth anything. The problem with money is people have put more value on money as opposed to the things money can do. The value of that which you can buy is in people's minds based on the money rather than the value of the money based on that which you can buy. And so understanding that people nowadays ac accumulate wealth based on the accumulation of debt instead of on the accumulation of wealth and that money is there to reduce the amount of time it takes to do something such as instead of walking to St. Louis I can take a bus or a plane or a car um, instead of building a TV myself I can pay for the finished product money is there for that to make life easier and to speed things up Nothing else. It in and of itself is worth nothing. 
If you have nothing of value to spend it on, money is worthless. So understanding that money is worthless and that giving it away is actually the point. I propose some sort of system where people can always be receiving it and that they'll always be wanting to give it away. Having fresh air, healthy food, clean water, adequate shelter for everyone so that no decision is ever based on the idea that I'm going to have to fight to stay alive and can actually be based on the information, the facts, the reality will cause a shift in people's perceptions. It will no longer be spin, it will be anti-spin. It will no longer be, well, all of this is fine and good, but you have to actually focus on this point right here, which is sort of beside the point. It's a distraction. Focus on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Every creature on this earth participates in this. There is no create creature whose existence is not affected or expressed in some degree of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness or the life thereof. It is not the law's job to relegate what happiness is or is not or what it should or should not be. There is certain things such as respecting life, you know, do not murder, do not steal, um, I would say do not lie, but to say do not covet, that is trying to control the individual and not the individual's actions. Acting out that desire is another thing. It's up to you to control yourself when it comes to your desires, not the government's. The natural law of life is chaotic. That's why laws tend to be an unnatural imposition on life. And the ultimate goal of law is to have no law. So this idea that the more laws you have, the more sophisticated you are, is actually the opposite. The more laws you have, the more entangled you become, and the closer to death you are. Because ultimately, when there's only law, there is only restriction of movement, and there is no life. There is no softness. It's all rigidity. It's a prison. And these are some ideas. Um, they're not laws open for discussion. Adaptable. Situation specific. But part of the solution.